Hey, welcome to the Draft Academy. My name is Mike, and in this video, I'm gonna teach you about arrays and linked lists. So these are two data structures, one that you're probably already familiar with, arrays, and one that's probably new to you if you're watching this video, which is linked list. We're gonna look at the difference between them when you use a linked list and when you use an array, and then we're actually gonna implement a linked list inside of JavaScript, so it's gonna be really fun. First thing we'll do is take a look at the difference between the two. So I have here visually represented arrays and linked lists. Now this is gonna be relevant for all like low level programming languages. A lot of times in higher level programming languages, the way that arrays are implemented are different. But for the most part, the difference between these two data structures has to do with how they live in the memory of your computer. So in this case, you can think about the memory of your computer as being composed of these little squares. So you have these little blue squares, and then here the light blue squares are the data structures. Now, when arrays are stored in memory, they're stored just like this sequentially. So right next to each other are all of the elements, right? So over here in memory, and these would just be like variables, like imagine you declare a variable in your program, that's kind of what we're talking about here with the memory. So all the different values that your computer needs to keep track of are stored in these little slots. And if you're doing an array, the slots would be right next to each other. So like physically right next to each other. And that means that if you know where one element is and you know the length of the array, you know where all the elements are, right? Because if I know this array has length three, then I know that the third element in the array is just two hops over to the right. Now a linked list is a little, a little bit different. So down here I have a diagram of a linked list and this is where the elements are not stored next to each other in memory. So you can see here in a linked list, we have one element over here and then there's a bunch of elements in between and then we have another element and then a couple more elements in between and then finally there's our third element. So that's kind of the difference is sometimes we have elements that are stored in disparate parts of memory and we want to be able to kind of link them together into a list. And sometimes we have them where they're sequential, in which case that would be an array. Now the primary thing or the primary difference between these has to do with how quickly we can access elements. So like I said, with the array, if I know the length of the array and I know where the first element is, I can instantaneously figure out where any other element is because it's just that many hops over to the right. With the linked list though, if I wanna figure out where the third element is or what it is, then I have to go and follow this little line. I have to hop over to the two and then from the two, I'd have to hop over to the three because of the way it's linked together. So in a linked list, we link the nodes together using links, right? So that's kind of what these arrows are representing. So we call these nodes. So each element in a linked list, we would call a node and it would have what's called a pointer, which is basically one of these little arrows and it would point you to the next element in the linked list. So that means if, again, if I wanted to figure out where the, what the third element is, I would have to <clears throat> kind of follow the list through. So I'd have to go to two and then I'd have to jump back over here uh, to three. So you have to sort of sequentially follow. So that's the basic difference is the way that we access the elements and the way that they're linked up together. Now, one of the cool things with linked list is that if I wanted to add another element into this, like for example, let's say we added a fourth one and let's say we just put it right here. So now these aren't gonna be in order anymore, but let's say this now becomes three, or we'll just say this is four. It's just not gonna be in sequential order. What I could do is move the pointer here and then I could attach another pointer over here. So that's how we would insert an element into the linked list. Okay, so that's the main difference between arrays and linked lists. It really has to do with how they live in memory and it really also has to do with like, are you trying to prioritize like everything being compacted in one space where we can look it up really quickly, in which case you'd wanna do an array or are you trying to uh, prioritize more flexibility where I could kind of, because even here, if I wanted to remove one of these, I could just move the pointer over to here. Whereas if I removed this two, I would then have to sort of shift this one down and then maybe, you know, what's happening to this space Would these have to get shifted down. There's all sorts of like things that you have to do when you delete elements in an array. So generally in an array, it's harder to delete elements, but it's easier to find them. And in a linked list, it's easier to kind of add and remove from the middle of the list, but it's harder to find them because we have to sort of follow the trail and follow all the links to get to where we want to go. 
So now what we're going to do is look at a basic implementation of a linked list in JavaScript. And we're going to implement a couple of the operations like appending, like inserting into the list. And then we'll also look at how we can print the list out. So what we can do is create a class. And the first thing we need to do is create a node class. So the node class is going to be sort of like a wrapper, right? Because what we need to do is we need to encode these little pointers somehow. So I need a way of kind of storing where this link is going and, and how these things are linked up. So that's what the node is going to do. And the node is going to have uh, just a couple of things. One is this dot value. So that's going to be like the number. And here, uh, actually, we should do this in a constructor. So in the constructor, we can say this dot value, and that's going to be equal to whatever they pass in. So that's just going to be value. And then this dot next is going to be the pointer. And that's going to be equal to null. So that is going to this dot next is basically representing uh, this arrow right here, and that's going to store a link to another node. So it'll just be another instance of this node class. Okay, so you'll see how we can kind of link all this up together in a second. Now we're going to create a linked list class. So linked list, and in here once again we'll create a constructor. Now the one thing that we need in the linked list class is we need something called the head. And that's going to be the point. It's essentially a pointer or a representation of the first element that we're storing. And initially, that might be null. So we can just set head equal to null. Now what we're going to do is look at how we might append an element to the end, right? So how do we add an element into this linked list? So I'm going to go ahead and say append. And then down here, we're going to start implementing this. So the first thing we'll do is create a new node. And they're going to be appending a value. So we could just say like, you know, my linked list dot append, and then maybe we append the value five. That's what we get passed in here. So we'll create a new node, and that's going to be equal to new node, and we'll pass in the value. So that's just, again, creating one of these little containers so that we can keep track of all this stuff. And then we're going to check to see if this dot head has a value. So we can say if there isn't a head. So in other words, this means if there's not a head, so if we don't have like a starting element here, then we're just going to say this dot head is equal to new node, and then we can return. So this is kind of like the simplest way of appending something, right? If there's nothing in this linked list so far, then we'll just say that the head is equal to that new node, and then we're done. We don't need to like go and do all the links. But if we don't have that, then what we're going to have to do is walk through the linked list and find the end. So imagine that I wanted to append that four, right? I want to append this four onto the end of the linked list. Well, in order to figure out where the last element is, because what we want essentially is for something like this to happen, right? But in order for this to happen, I first need to know where this three is. And the only way I can know where the three is, is if I first know where the one is, so this would be the head, and then I'd have to go find the two, and then I'd have to find the three, and then I'd realize that it's not pointing to anything, so then we'd attach the four here onto the end. So we basically have to do what's called walking the list. We have to walk through, and I don't know if my head is in the way here, we have to walk through the entire linked list in order to find where the end is. And that's kind of like the core part of this data structure. Um, but just to draw some contrast, remember, with the array, you know, we are we automatically know where the end of it is because um, all the elements are stored sequentially next to each other. Now, the interesting thing as well is that linked lists can grow dynamically, whereas arrays can't. Okay, so let's create a little um, walker here that's going to walk us through this linked list. So the first thing we'll do is say current, and this is generally the strategy that's used, sort of the algorithm. So we're going to create a variable called current, and that's going to store the node in the list that we are at each step that we take. And then we can say while current.next. So remember, current is going to be one of these nodes, and .next points us to the next node. So as long as it has a next node, in other words, as long as it has something else that it's pointing to, like one has two, two has three, three now has four. As long as it has one of those, then what we're going to do is we're just going to say current is equal to current dot next. So we're essentially 
moving to the next node in the linked list. Okay, that's what this is doing. All right, and then at the end of this, we should be at the final node. So we can say current.next. So in this case, current doesn't have a next node. So this is the end. This is the last element in the list. So then we could say it's next is equal to the new node. So that is the sort of algorithm for what we call walking through a linked list. And that's generally what you'll do in any situation. All right, but let's test that this works. So we're going to need a way of printing this out. We're going to do something similar. So anytime we do stuff with linked lists, this is sort of the algorithm right here, this kind of current thing. And that's exactly what we'll use when we try to print this out. So I'm going to go ahead and create, and there's a couple ways you could write this function, but I'm just going to create a, uh, a variable called values. This is actually going to be an array, ironically. Um, so we're going to create a variable called values and then let's use this same sort of algorithm. So we're going to walk the linked list. And now inside, in addition to kind of moving on to the next one, we're going to say values.push current.value. So we'll push every single value that's in this linked list into a new array. And then down here, we can just print all of those out. So we can say console.log values. So now we should get all the values that are in that linked list. And it's saying that I have an error here. Let me see. Unexpected token. Uh, there must be something here that we messed up. Oh yeah, here we go. Okay. This needs to go inside of here. CodePen does not auto format. How do they not have that feature yet? This website is so old. <laughs> okay. So now let's come down here and test that we did this correctly. So I'm going to create a new linked list. I'm just going to call it LL is equal to new linked list. Okay. And then we'll say ll dot append, and then we can pass in a value. So I'm going to pass in the value one, and then let's do a couple more append two, and then we'll do three. E and D. Okay. Cool. And then we'll say ll dot print. So what should happen is we'll walk through all those values in the linked list, and then we'll print them out. Now, once again, CodePen just throws all sorts of errors. And then now, of course, it won't print because I need to change something. And okay, so it looks like it's only printing out these. Oh, actually, okay, so then the last thing we need to do here is say, I don't know if you guys caught that one current dot. So in this case, current dot next, uh, it doesn't have a next, but it still has a value. Right? So when we get here, this current dot next, it this is still a, a node. So this is the last node and we're not printing it out. That's basically what happened. So we could also say values dot push current. Okay. And oh, current dot value. And there might be a couple of modifications that we can make to that. But of course, how do I get this to print again? All right, let's change this back to three. There should be a button that just says reprint. All right, cool. So now we're printing all those elements in the linked list. All right. So I think that just about does it for this tutorial. It's a little explanation about arrays versus linked lists. I hope you enjoyed. And if you did, please leave a like and subscribe and otherwise I'll see you in the next one.